Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy, and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. So guys, I've got a product review for you today. It is a new N95 respirator by Gerson. Yeah, so guys, I think maybe I'm getting a little bit spoiled here with reviewing respirators versus the old days when it was only masks and respirators weren't available to the general public. Given the standardization of that NIOSH approval, it just means that the medium itself has been tested and has stood up to a certain de degree of scrutiny, and I'm not having to like use water drops and extrapolate and things like that. I recently heard about the Gerson N95. It is available on the Armbrust website, and I thought that this one might solve a particular problem really well and that is the tendency to leak oh, excuse my arthritis gloves it's so cold here today I'm, I'm spoiled and I'm used to living in a very hot climate so I've got the turtleneck cold gear and my arthritis gloves as well anyway uh, very often uh, people including myself have issues with leak where the nose and the under eye area kind of come together and contour and I'm always looking for something that's going to give a better fit in that area as I've said before on this channel, and if you're new to my channel, I suggest you go back and listen to some of the previous videos where I talked about, you know, N95s versus masks, and I talked about the mediums and filtration and whatnot, but, you know, the important thing is to recognize that there's nothing magic about an N95, so if it says N95, that means that it has stood up to certain rigors of filtration. But that degree of filtration assumes a proper fit. So the tinier the particle size that you're trying to filter, the more important the fit is going to become because anything that filters to a small particle size is by definition offering a great deal of resistance. And the more resistance there is, the more likelihood there's going to be for leak. With any of these products that are meant to filter down to a really small particle size with that kind of resistance, the fit becomes extremely important because any little area for leak is going to leak. So you're going to be ending up breathing more of the air that you breathe from around the mask than actually through it. And it's very important that you're breathing through it to get the benefit of that filtration of the medium. I was wondering if this particular style of respirator, given that it's kind of a narrow duck bill, I'm gonna show it to you in a moment. I was wondering if it might benefit those of us who have some issues with leak in the under eye area. Let me just first give you some basic pricing information at the Armbrust website. I have recommended other products off of the Armbrust website website in the past. Armbrist has offered a very generous code to my viewers, which is Sandy20, and it's 20% off your order. It's not just a one-time use code. You can go ahead and use that as many times as you'd like. So this Gerson respirator model 3230 comes in either a pack of 50, and that's what this is. This is a box of 50, and they're all individually wrapped. It also comes in a pack of 200. Now for the pack of 50, it sells at retail price on Armbrus website for $69.95, so that's about $1.40 per item, which is really pretty good as far as these N95s are concerned. I have found some that are roughly around a dollar, and others you'd get into the, like the 3Ms, for example, and they get up near $4 an item. Now if you take the 20% off with Sandy 20, it brings the price down to $55.96 for this box, and that's about $1.12 an item, so that's a very significant savings. Now, they do have some other options for savings, like if it's your first time using their website, they have a 30% off on your first order. I assume that means you give them your email address and they send you a code that's a one-time use. You can also do subscribe and save on their website. I don't have any experience with that, but it says that that is a 30% off. Now, if you go to the box of 200, which I believe is currently unavailable on the website, but in the quantity of 200, it retails for $249.95, so that brings it down to about $1.25 per item. And with the Sandy 20 code for 20% off, it brings it down to just under $200 for the box of 200, and that's about $1 an item. So, you know, $1 an item for the quantity of 200 at... Uh, the quantity of 50 at $1.12 per item I still think is a really nice option for a respirator. Now, there's one thing I do get people ask me a lot, and the answer is just unfortunately kind of nuanced, which is reusing these or how many times or how many hours of use. You know, I think that you kind of have to judge the kind of setting that you're in. Since by definition, in order to be a NIOSH approved N95 respirator, the item has to be a single use disposable. 
So technically, it's a single-use disposable, and you would only use it once. Obviously, we live in the real world, and it's one thing if you have it on for like six hours at a time because you're performing some kind of work where this thing isn't being removed at all. And then you have a certain amount of moisture buildup and whatever. But, you know, some of us are using this for like five minutes to run into a UPS store or two minutes to run in there, you know, whatever. I think you just have to sort of use your judgment. And I think about the total time of use. So, of course, the longer it's on your face with without being removed, the more moisture buildup you're going to have. Uh, I also think you need to think about where you're using it. So if I use this in a place that I thought was particularly high risk, I really wouldn't be inclined to use it again. You know, on the other hand, if it's, you know, maybe even a moderate risk, I, if I put it aside in a plastic bag, leave it on the passenger seat of my car and it's sitting there for about a week, yeah, I might use that again for a little while. It's kind of up to you since there's no real Current recommendation, I try to think in terms of length of time because that informs the moisture content. And then I also try to think in terms of the setting in which I'm using it. All right, so when you open up the box, first of all, you get a little bit of paperwork here and it gives you all kinds of warnings and disclaimers. You also find on the back of the box, there's some good instruction on how to put this on. I'm gonna go over it anyway, as I always do when I review one of these. Each item is individually wrapped and it's nice you don't have to really break the packaging because there's a flap here that's adhesive so like i said if you're going to reuse this this makes it nice and easy to put it right back down in there close it off and you know reseal it's not a seal but it's a little bit of a seal now something interesting happened when i went to try this on and it's largely because i did not read the instructions i feel like you know i know how to put on an n95 so i'm going to show you I think I might have made a discovery or improved the fit for myself. When you open this up, this is a duckbill type of respirator, so it kind of sticks out a bit when you have it on. And you see there's like one thick strap. Okay, well, what I did not realize, because I'm going to try to give you a close-up of that, that is such a continuous thick strap. I did not realize that this actually splits apart into two straps. And that makes sense, right? Because an N95 respirator has two straps. It's a head strap design, so one for up high and one for down low. So I looked at this and I thought, huh, it's a single head strap N95. I didn't know that they could get that approved by NIOSH, but, you know, I kind of feel like I mostly use the, just the top, the head strap. I rarely feel like the bottom is really doing anything for me when I have the top one in the right place. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to go ahead and put it on the way I did because I actually feel like I get an excellent fit. Not that the fit's any worse when I split these apart, so I'm just gonna do it both ways. You know, what you're supposed to do is make sure to take the strap out. You're supposed to, you know, let this kind of cup a little bit because it's, it's hard to put it on when it's like totally flat. So you'll see, I'm just sort of letting it cup a little bit. And what I like to do first is let this bottom border catch under my chin. I think it's just easier to do that because you're going to be pulling up on the strap. And so if it's already caught under your skin, it's not going to tend to want to like come up over the top of your face. So I just do this. Now, you will feel like a little crackling. You might have just heard it actually. And one thing I will say about this particular kind of strap I don't think the longevity of this kind of strap is great. I had some N95s like years ago in a closet for, I don't even remember for what reason. I, I think maybe we were painting or something. And they were this kind of strap. I think they were the Kimberly Clark, but a very similar design. It stretches, but it's not too stretchy. It almost feels a little bit crunchy, like every time you use it, you're afraid it's going to break. I did find with those particular respirators anyway, and I, I'm not exactly sure that they're the same material here in the strap, but I think they are. I found that over time those dried out. And so one day I went to get some and they'd probably been in that closet about two years. And the straps were just so dried out that you couldn't you couldn't even stretch them, I mean, the slightest bit without them just breaking and, and like disintegrating in your hands. So I don't know that that's the same as this, it just feels like it. It's a very unique feel to this kind of strap. Now, I've been using these for a while now, probably close to a month, because I wanted to make sure that I had used them quite a bit before I went ahead and reviewed them for you. I've had no trouble with them, but I, I doubt that this is going to be the kind of thing to just leave in a closet for, you know, a year or two. Of course, that's not the reason to buy them, right? So I'm assuming if you're buying these, it's because you're going to want to get some use out of them. 
you know, if you're not sure, try the box of 50 instead of a quantity of 200. So anyway, I've, here I've got it on with just one strap. I've got this high on my head, as I always tell people. Um, I already had it caught under my chin, and it, it does contour very nicely and very deep under the chin, and then it comes up. Now, the next thing to do is to mold it. Now, it's got a nice long nose piece, and, well, the nose piece goes out to about here, so it's about the outer edge of my iris but it does have just kind of a nice tight molding right around there and it does seem to contour nicely to this deep area at least that I have in the concavity here where my nose and my eyes are contoured the first thing I'm doing is that big deep breath like I've shown you guys before and with something that's as form-fitting as this, and I will say that I think this fits tight. Some people are going to complain about that. I think it's in the plus column. Uh, I think this does fit tight enough that I will feel any kind of, even a slight leak. And I feel nothing. Now, let me back up for a second and review another thing that I've stated, which is to try to get a better contour if you do have this issue with deep set eyes. I recommend, you know, having it high, not so high that it's going to be moving around on you if you, you know, have any kind of an expression with your eyes. But what I do recommend is holding a little slack here while you push down in the corner. And then keep this finger pushing and then contour the respirator the rest of the way. Now that usually provides me with a really nice fit. Um, there's not actually a lot of room to play with and adjust this, at least on me. And I have a pretty narrow face, so I, I find it interesting that this thing fits so snug. This might be a problem for people who have like very large faces, very large heads. I'd be interested to hear if anybody who is on the larger side tries these and finds that they hold up well, particularly the strap. I'm wondering how well it will stretch and how large. You do see it kind of moving in and out when I speak. That's normal. That's good. This might be a nice thing for people who just don't like that feel of the mask when it does occasionally touch, like under the nose or onto the mouth. It will not do that here. Now, right now I'm taking a huge deep breath. I also see it's kind of got a well here. It doesn't always develop that. It doesn't bother me particularly. But so if you take a big deep breath, you'll feel it. But barring that, like with just normal speaking, you don't really feel this right up against your mouth. At least I don't. So go ahead and put my dirty safety glasses on. I really don't have any leak. I got a lot of smudges, but I don't have any fogging. And as you can see, this particular design, it definitely stays put. I can move my head all around, up and down, and it really does stay put. So, you know, one thing I think that this particular respirator is very good at addressing is this issue of fogging underneath the eyes. I have found this to provide me with a very superior fit. Um, I found that with other respirators, I did review like recently the 3M. I'm going to link that video right here. That one also did a very good job for me of minimizing that tendency to leak right up here that gets conveniently evidenced in glasses because that actually helps you, you know, if you have that as a diagnostic tool. Uh, the 3M really did a good job for me, but, you know, that one is pretty expensive. That one, I think, came out to be close to $4 an item, so that's probably the most expensive of the N95 respirators that I've reviewed. And then I reviewed a couple others that I'm going to link down below in the description box. And, you know, with a little work, I, I did make them work. There were plenty that I thought were good options, but, you know, this one is right down there with the most economical and this one seems to be the best. The only other thing that I have had where I just really haven't had to do any adjusting and taking things off and trying again with the, you know, to get the fogging to go away. Again, not because I mind as much the nuisance of the fog. It's because I don't want to be leaking. The fog tells me that I'm breathing from around the mask instead of through it. And so I don't want that. 
So the only other item that I've reviewed is that DNA mask, which again is not an N95 respirator. It never will be because it's not a single use design. Um, you know, that is being a washable item. It won't keep it that degree of filtration forever. They've tested it up to 10 washes. And so at 10, it's still performing like new with the same specs. But you know, how long is that gonna go on for how many washes? You know, nobody knows. But Suffice it to say, I have found that I had that same ideal fit where I'm not having the fog or the leak as evidence through fog with the DNA. But some people want an N95. And, you know, I see a benefit to an N95. And there are some settings where I'd only want an N95. And, you know, these days, a lot of settings. You know, if you're wearing a mask these days, it's really because of aerosols. To my mind, I'm thinking indoors, I'm doing something like this, or I'm doing that DNA mask under certain settings. When it comes to a mask that filters like that medium, it I like my DNA. Some people say that one's a little bit scratchy. You know, when we find the perfect mask or respirator, <laughs> that's going to be great. But when it comes to respirators, uh, now that I've been wearing these for weeks to try them out for you guys, th this has actually become my go-to respirator. My Probably my second choice is that 3M N95 that I reviewed a while back. But again, that's really on the expensive side. And I find this one just kind of a lot easier. It's a lot lighter and I, I just have no issues with it. So like, why would I go ahead and pay $4 an item? You can see that the strain of just having had this around my head, these the straps are starting to come apart like they're supposed to. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the correct way now. <laughs> and I, to be honest, I feel like I just stumbled on this way to wear it as one thick strap and I feel like that's working so well for me that that's just that's what I'm doing but you know the right way to do this technically is to have both straps and one is up high like I had when they were not separated yet and the other one goes down behind your ears so again I'm gonna catch this under my chin because I think with this mask there's no other way to do it and I'm gonna Keep one here and it definitely feels like a lot lighter you know it's you know not that one thick strap it feels like there's a lot less tug and in some ways I feel like maybe that's why you know I feel like I get a better fit actually when I don't separate the two straps uh, again that's technically wrong but I just think that before you peel those two apart you've got one thick head strap and I think it just adds more heft or something. All right, so I think I've got that positioned how I want it, and let's start with the... Every now and then I see a smudge and I'm not sure if I'm getting fog, like, and every single time I do this I say, like, why don't I wash these before I get started? Yeah, I don't see any fog this way either. You know, this is technically the right way to wear it with the two straps. This is a way that feels like more lightweight. I, I don't know if that makes sense, but again, if you don't separate those two straps and you have one thick strap just going up high, I'm finding that the fit is great, but you definitely feel it more. It's just one hefty pull, right? And these are just now much more fine, delicate straps. You know, I feel like I'm particularly tolerant of any issues with masks. So if it touches my face, it doesn't bother me. Um, if it's a little bit scratchy, doesn't bother me. If it gets moist, doesn't bother me. And I, I think it's just because, you know, I've been in the field that I've been in for, you know, 30 some years, I was wearing masks every single day and we never had a choice about it. So nobody ever asked, you know, I want one that's like this, or I want one like that's like that. It just wasn't an option. So. I think I'm particularly dismissive of some of the things that are day-to-day -day nuisances for people who aren't used to these. You know, that said, um, it certainly is a little more pleasant to have a little more lightweight feel where you've got these straps separated. So I, I certainly have no quarrel with it, wearing it correctly. All right, so I got that off. Now, when you're done, and let's say you have only used this for a short bit, and you decide you want to use it again, it fits right back in there. And... I guess you don't get quite a seal with this, but it's still, it is nicely protected. Now, I will say that as much as I'm concerned about this perceived brittleness, I guess, I, for lack of a better word, of the straps, I have, like I said, been using these for about a month now. And I have used 
like one throughout a day. So putting it on, taking it off multiple times. And I've never had one of the straps break yet. So, I, you know, the concern that I had about that, I think really pertains more to if this is just going to get left somewhere in a closet for like a year or two. I, I don't think you can expect that just the material that those straps are made of to hold up like that. But I haven't had an issue with it. You know, and I don't really think that any product like this is meant to just be bought and then sit around for a while. Um, now I can show you, they really are stretchy. So this might just be something like, well, it's in my head. It reminds me of a product that I had that issue with, and that was a product that did sit for like two years and dry out. So, you know, I just felt like it was worth mentioning. You know, but there's nothing that has happened during the period of time that I've been using these that would lead me to believe or that gives any indication of a problem with these head straps. You know, it's funny, I've found since I've gotten out here on YouTube and said that this is an issue right here for me, the concavity around my eyes where I leak. I've heard from lots of people that said that they have that problem too. I'm always looking for more and more reasonable uh, respirators because anything that's a disposable just does get expensive, obviously. Um, so I'm always looking for nice options and I'm, I'm really happy to say that I think this is certainly one of them and I'm going to keep using these and I am going to replenish this stock. Yeah, I highly recommend you give it a try. And if you do, uh, let us know down in the comments section how things work. Now, I am interested in hearing if anybody who has a larger face, a larger head, uh, goes ahead and uses this and has a good experience or not. I do anticipate that if there's any sort of group of people that are going to find that this it does not work for them, that might be the group, people with larger proportions. But, you know, maybe I'm wrong and I'd be pleasantly surprised to find out. I will put the links down in the description box to the product. Again, it's not an affiliate link, so there's no commission for me. That, that uh, code, Sandy20, is just a 20% off. I use, you know, any influence that I do have, I just use to try to help my viewers to save a little bit of money. Um, let me know if it was helpful, and until next time, be well. Bye-bye.